Hi again, everyone. Kenna Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. We track 450 individual softwood lumber and panel commodities every Friday. We are based in Vancouver, BC, and have been working every week since 1952. I'm the third owner. Uh, today I'm going to talk about um, the very excellent uh, indicators of the latest uh, softwood lumber uh, sales and movement, the rail car loadings, and the uh, lumber production and sawmill capacity utilization rates uh, that comes out of the Western Wood Products Association. They are based in Portland, Oregon, and they do a newsletter called Lumber Track. Comes out uh, once a month uh, for about three months before. So uh, let's look real quick at the first chart. Uh, you can see how um, during the beginning of this year uh, the uh, volumes improved and the sawmill uh, utilization rates improved and that explains um, a little bit what happened um, with the big run-up of lumber prices and then the falling back down to earth that we've seen in more recent months. Actually, let's start with the rail car loadings first because this data is for the week ending August 7th. You can see the red line. This is U.S. forest products. It does include uh, more than just lumber. It might have some logs or pulp and paper for sure is in there. Anyway, you can see that a huge drop in February of this year due to weather. These are some of the things that impact um, volumes and the inventory for sale which does make a difference to the prices and uh, as that got worked out and more product was moving on the railway more became available for sale and the price improved this is some great data that comes out of your denny similar to my other videos of uh, u.s housing starts and my lumber prices this is u.s housing starts and lumber on the railway and you can see how over uh, in june it was pretty flat um quite low compared to what the market was doing and then popped up again in august so this means a lot of that inventory that people have been talking about is moving through the pipeline and arriving to customers so their desire to buy might be lessening a little bit. So this is the same data out of the American Association of Railroads uh, for Canada. Uh, also a drop in February but uh, not quite as steep. You can see that uh, last year in 2020 same thing happened probably due to weather. The steeper drop there and right in the middle of this year I cannot account for that. I don't know why. Potentially it might have been paperwork or um, problems with the mills getting uh, lumber out of their yards, maybe the wildfires. Regardless, volumes dropped uh, and then recovered uh, in July. And again, this impacts the price. Okay, so rail car loadings give you a good idea of supply chain. That data is uh, relatively recent. I mean, um, we've already got um, early August numbers. Um, the What I'm gonna show you next with the lumber production and the sawmill capacity, uh, there's quite a lag there, but is really, really important data. And like I keep saying, the change to the lumber prices is a real leading indicator. Uh, we do that every week for that week. And so um, let's look at the graph for uh, what is happening in Canada, U.S. for the lumber production. It's much improved over uh, those really terrible lows. It took the sawmill industry a long time to adjust uh, to the new requirements uh, for safety of the social distancing and to recover from the real, like, absolute stop to production, um, the border uh, problems with uh, getting uh, goods across the border, uh, that lasted a long time. And so that has worked out. This data is for January to May. And what I'm expecting for, you know, July, June, July, August, um, similar improvements. Um, and hopefully a certain amount of stability in um, on the sawmilling side that will remove some of the uncertainty for the end user 
what is the price of lumber going to be at your local retail yard and what are the small contractors going to have to pay um, for people who are either uh, building um, a, a home for themselves or renovating, um, doing some significant uh, re renovations on the home that they already own. These lines look somewhat flat, but don't forget that by June of last year, a lot of the problems from spring were starting to get worked out. And uh, in March of this year, both Canada-US uh, production volumes uh, were improving to something that would be considered normal. Canada is still quite a bit lower than what we would like to see, but at least it's not as terrible as it was in spring of last year. U.S. really getting production volumes up to high levels uh, when the lumber market is quite strong. Um, so here we have the graph that everybody always wants to see, the sawmill capacity utilization rates in Canada, U.S. You can see Canada bouncing around quite a bit, really quite low uh, in December, which, you know, maybe isn't abnormal but to be at 70 percent that is quite low normally the canadian uh, high volume uh, well optimized sawmills run uh, you know above 90 percent so we're approaching that now in may i'm expecting for june july and august to be coming closer to what we would have seen as normal in previous years all of this affects the lumber price as um Supply and demand are out of whack, uh, the blue line being uh, this year, huge drop, uh, and then some recovery in just the recent weeks, uh, end of July, and then another drop. What's going to happen through August and into September? We don't know that yet, but at least uh, a lot of this huge volatility looks like it's starting to correct. Okay, great. So that's uh, sort of a wrap-up of an overview of the dynamics of the softwood lumber market. In Canada, US, here we are um, in the middle of August. Normally, it would just be really getting slow right now. People would be sort of having or coming off of their vacations, getting ready for back to school in September. And as usual, Labor Day for construction activity and for uh, lumber sales is uh, the beginning of the slowdown. There are times when uh, there's good weather in September and that uh, do-it-yourself uh, home renovation projects is enough to keep the lumber prices maybe buoyant a little bit to the end of September, but really uh, normally it's uh, uh, slowdown time and things getting softer. It wasn't like that last year. We don't know if it's going to be like that this year. There's an incredible amount of storms happening in the U.S. South, uh, really severe storms. Um, that's uh, reconstruction activity, re-roofing. There's uh, just horrific wildfires here in B.C. I don't even want to talk about it. We had rain last weekend and the weekend before. Did almost nothing to stop the fires. Uh, last year was horrible. This year is worse. So um, a lot of things up in the air that uh, we can't really compare, you know, previous decades to now. Uh, however, these uh, data sets that I'm showing you uh, do tell you precisely what's happening, um, you know, with the actual production and movement of lumber. And can provide an indication of what we might be able to expect uh, coming into the end of this year. Uh, looking forward to the beginning of next year, if uh, January 2021 is any indication. Right away at the beginning of the year 2022, lumber sales will be strong again. The uh, longer term outlook for U.S. home construction activity is still as strong as it has been for the last year and a half and uh, will stay that way at least for the next year if not year and a half. So stay with us, check back, uh, go on my website, read up, uh, contact me, fill out a form on the subscribe link um, of my website to have a look at a sample, subscribe to the actual dashboard and get all of this information every Friday when we put it out instead of, you know, weeks or months later when I have a chance to write it on the website or make a YouTube.